The purpose of paper number four is to learn how to use a reading as a lens. And in this case, you're actually going to be working with a theory. So you're going to have to have a really good understanding of what that theory uh, is, which is, of course, presented as a reading. Um, and then you're going to apply that to a current event. Um, so let's go through the paper prompt to make sure that we get all the details that you need to know about this essay. It's going to be a little complex, but I'm hoping that it will be very enjoyable at the same time. So as always, you need to um, use standard MLA formatting that you've done um, all quarter long. Of course, the response sheet, uh, which we'll go over in a moment, will out, you know, lay out the specifics for you. But um, in particular, you're going to have to be more careful with your works cited page. No longer are you just working with uh, one or two works, but you're going to be doing outside research on your own. So I will help you in that, uh, but you've got to be able to compile your sources as well as the article that you're using as a lens. Um, you've got to be able to compile those into um, proper entries on your works cited page. So you need to have at least two sources, um, none of which may be web only. And when I say web only, that just means that um, it needs to be academic, no.com kind of thing, and it needs to be a source that was in print first. So um, in a separate video, I will show you how to use the library's databases in order to find sources. And the confusion comes um, in thinking that, oh, well, I used this online database and I found this online article. Does that mean it's web only? No, if you're working with scholarly journals, they were printed before they were scanned and put online. So those are not web only sources. So web only sources uh, may be uncredible newspapers, magazines, things like that, that are just putting stuff online. Uh, you just have to use your best judgment. Um, online sources are not bad. That's not what I'm trying to say. You have to be very careful about finding credible online sources. And if you use the, the databases through the library, more than likely, you are using very safe, academic, incredible sources. So I will show you how to do that. And that's where I ask you to uh, focus most of your research. Uh, so again, make sure that you compile um, a properly formatted or excited page with uh, your two sources, as well as the article information. All right, so the assignment um, to begin, go back to pages 118 and 119. Uh, in the textbook, which tells you what um, using a reading as a lens does. Make sure you refresh yourself on that. And then the next thing you need to do um, is read. I can, ta-da! It would help if I spelled the guy's name right, huh? Um, so you're going to be reading about Nicholas uh, Lumens, or Lumens, I don't, I don't quite know how to say his last name, um, Theory of the Mass Media. Uh, which and the article itself is actually written by Beckman and Stare. And so what they have done, um, Beckman and Stare have read um, Lumen's book. So Lumen wrote a book um, called The Reality of the Mass Media. And so what Beckman and Stare have done is kind of summarized and condensed his theory into um, really it's a five page article. It it says seven when you open the document, but the last page is blank, and there's just a tiny bit on the sixth page. So really, it's only five pages long. It's not particularly, um, in my opinion, difficult reading. It is dense, but you've been doing um, dense readings all quarter. So I have complete faith that you will be able to, to read this theory. Um, and that's what Beckman and Stair's job is. They're compiling and condensing this theory for people to read about. And then if they want to go into more detail, they, of course, can go to uh, Lumen's book if they want. So the first step is to read this article by Beckman and Stair. Of course, it's going to be listed in the module. Let's take a look at that really quick. So here is the article itself. Um, I will be sure to uh, get the publication information for you that you need. Most of it's going to be right up here. Um, but I will help you out with that. Here's an abstract of it. Doesn't give you a ton of information, but at least gets you started. Um, and really, it's it's not all that long. It's not particularly scary. Uh, but you're really going to want to print this out and annotate it as you go, because as you learn um, different aspects and facets of this theory, you're going to want to highlight them um, so that you can go back after you've read the whole thing at least a couple times, I'm hoping. Uh, look at your annotations and focus on 
one or two elements of the theory that you want to focus on yourself. You do not have to apply the entire theory to the current event that you um, want to investigate. That would be way, way, way too much. So pick one or two. Um, if you do two, make sure that they work in conjunction with each other um, and then go from there. So this is the article itself. Let's go back to the prompt. Um, so as you are reading, if you find that you're having a really hard time um, with Beckman and Stair's article, trying to really nail down what uh, Lumen's um, theory is all about, I've posed some questions, and these are posted um, in the module as well. But these questions should help direct your, your thought process um, when trying to understand what the theory itself is. So uh, keywords like manufactured reality, the recipient and the sender, uh, the dual reality of the, of the media, coding, limited scope. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but these questions will help you pinpoint um, what I saw as the major elements of the theory. So if you can pick out this information, then you've got a really good start on what the theory is. Answer these questions to yourself, and if you don't know them, keep reading. And... Um, these, these start from the beginning of the article and work their way through. So manufactured reality is on page one, whereas the um, three key assumptions are on the last page. So I tried to help you in that way too. I'm, I'm trying to help you move through this theory to make sense of it and to make sure that you point out um, the really specific and important information. And this will help you um, decide what what aspects you wanna you wanna discuss with your current event, such as uh, manufactured reality, for example. Define what that is, define how that relates to Lumen's theory, and then perhaps this is what you'd want to be, um, this is what you're interested in using to analyze the current event that you choose. So again, this is meant to be helpful, to help kind of zone you in on the important aspects of the theory. Um, and as, again, as long as you can answer these questions, you're gonna have a really good understanding of what the theory itself is. And of course, at any time, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, chat in Canvas with you about this. This is not an easy task that I'm asking of you, but um, I have full confidence in the work that you have done so far this quarter. You've, you've worked with the theoretical, you've worked with uh, analysis every week so far. So I'm just asking you to go a little further, push yourself a little further and apply a theory to an event. So let's move on with this. Once you have a really good understanding of what the theory is and once you've read the um, article several times and gotten a really good grasp of what you want to talk about um, or I guess what aspects of the theory you want to apply, you need to pick um, a current event. And there are only three that you can choose from and they are listed right here. Option A, B, and C. You can discuss the Brown shooting in Missouri, ISIS in Iraq, and the Ebola outbreak. And the reason that I've chose these three, uh, chosen these three topics is because they are very, very um, heavy in the media. The media is very, um, very much affecting these three issues. So um, that's the automatic connection. You don't have to make the connection on, oh, how was the Brown shooting um, you know, related to the media? Uh, it's nothing but media, really. So then you're going to be applying uh, Lumen's theory of the media to these um, specific um, events. And how, again, how you do that is up to, do, up to you. And I would suggest researching first. So what is it about ISIS that um, is in the media? And then, of course, how, how can you apply the theory to that um, in order to explain that? Um, I think of the Brown, if I were going to write this paper, I'd probably um, write about the Brown shooting and how the media has just exploded this event that that really, when you're a police officer, that it happens every day somewhere. Uh, I have friends and my husband is in law enforcement, so um, I have personal um, experience in that realm of, um, in that profession, I suppose. So then I would discuss, okay, I'm going to talk about the Brown shooting and how the media has portrayed that. Um, perhaps I would use, going back to the example I already listed, I would use the manufactured reality. So what, what I would do then is find some sources to help me out um, with, the, with the shooting itself, with that current event. And then I would then use um, the idea of manufactured reality in order to analyze those sources 
um, in relation to the current event. I hope this is starting to make sense and you're starting to see the connection. The articles or the sources that you find don't necessarily have to be about the media. Um, it could just be maybe an, a newspaper um, article that you are analyzing and saying, okay, this is where the media is manufacturing reality and this is why and this is what it's doing to the viewer, so on and so forth. You can also find articles that are specifically about the media. Uh, for example, I found one, ha. Um, how the Ebola outbreak is exploited for commercial gain. So this um, could be an article specifically about how the media is related to Ebola. You can then go in here and find information to help support your, your whatever point you're trying to make. So again, your sources can either be um, just simply media texts that you can then analyze using the theory and then come to some sort of interpretation or conclusion about that. Or they can be sources like the Ebola one I just showed you where it's actually coming out and saying, this is what the media is doing. So look for both. Uh, try to broaden your search. And again, I'm going to help you with the research aspect. Um, but just start generating some ideas on, okay, I've got this theory down. This is what I want to use. I'm going to use manufactured reality. And I want to um, you work with the idea of opinion. And I'm going to do it about the Brown shooting. And I'm going to use these texts in order to do that. And then you're going to start building from there. So it should start to make more sense once you start working with it. And if it doesn't, let me know. And I will work through it with you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, again, make sure you've got two outside sources in addition to um, uh, Beckman and Stairs article. So you're going to have three automatically, but of course you can have more and I would encourage you to have more. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, one major thing that I am asking you to do in this particular paper is write an introductory paragraph and then in your first body paragraph, I want you to summarize what the what the theory is. Uh, this, this element is listed right here. So use your first body paragraph to summarize and give an overview of the media theory so that your reader has a proper context before you move on to your analysis. So uh, it will also show me that you know what um, you're doing and what you're talking about. So make sure that you have that element in place as well. Uh, make sure that your um, argument, this really is an argumentative paper. You were trying to prove a point through um, this theory of the mass media about a specific topic. So for example, a really generic thesis statement that I could use about the Brown shooting is uh, the media manufactured reality in regards to the Brown shooting in order to sway public opinion. That's really generic. I want you to be more specific than that, but you know, I haven't actually written this paper, so I don't know specifically what I would what I would say, but you're going to want to do something like that. It has to be th thesis driven and it has to be an argument. Okay. Uh, your audience is someone who um, is very general. You have to do a really good job explaining what the theory is. You have to do, um, perhaps they do know about the current issue that you're working with, but you still have to give good detail, um, especially when you integrate your sources and, and things like that. So the assessment's going to be the same. You're going to get 20 points for turning it in um, correctly and on time. And then I'll give you feedback for it that, so that you can then include it in the portfolio if you would like. Here is the response sheet. Um, it's got to be five pages long, five full pages long. So make sure you remember that. I think all the MLA is pretty much the same. Um, some different requirements here. Remember the two outside sources. Uh, make sure you pick only one of the three topics that I have provided above. Remember, that is the Brown shooting, ISIS, and Ebola. Um, and then make sure you have a, a body paragraph that summarizes Lumen's theory, theory regarding the mass media. All right, so um, I've mentioned, I think that's all I wanted to mention about that. I've mentioned online, let's go to our online classroom, that I have some um, paper samples, but this is from a previous um, assignment that I have done. So it still was re using a reading as a lens, but it's a very different assignment. So I kept those samples on there for you so you could see how they integrated somebody else's work uh, into analyzing a completely separate issue. So I hope that they are still helpful um, in showing you how to do that. So this is paper number four. Let me know what I can do to help, where I can help clarify. If you want to chat online or via email, um, I'm perfectly happy to do that. Remember, too, I'm always willing to look at your papers before you turn them in. 
Um, so if you need help in any way, just let me know and I would be happy to do that for you.